Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today for Sketchbook Sunday episode 28. Uh, firstly, I just want to thank you guys for all of your amazing words of kindness and support on my last Sketchbook Sunday, which was episode 27. I know it was probably, well, definitely a lot more negative than my normal videos, but I'm also going to tie into the topic uh, in this video, but I was sick and I am feeling a lot better. My voice is almost back to normal. There's still some cough and raspiness, but I am feeling a whole lot better. So I just want to thank you guys so much to those of you who said such nice things and were so supportive on my video. I felt so weird about posting it because it was a bit more negative than my usual stuff, but sometimes you just can't be false uh, positive, you know? <clears throat> And um, I also want you guys to know that I'm human and I go through weird downfalls sometimes and that's normal and if you're in that, don't feel bad. And <laughs> it was also kind of a way for me to not feel bad about it. But I wanted to talk about creative or artistic burnout today and that is something that I feel is almost unavoidable for artists. Um, at some point you're going to burn out, especially if you're producing a lot of work in a short amount of time. Um, this is specific for me. Um, it happens in uh, bursts, I guess, where I'm just painting and painting and painting, producing a lot of work and a lot of videos and I'm doing so much and then I'll, all of a sudden like the fire burns out and, and I can't and although I still produce art and I'm still painting and I don't really stop um, I think the feelings are a bit different and I do produce less than I was when I was you know functioning at a hundred percent capacity so one of the ways to deal with this for me is I preach this in so many videos but that's writing <clears throat> to write out your thoughts uh, your fears your hopes your dreams whatever you want to do write it all out um, sometime in the morning. This is a method I got from the book The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. Now, the thing with the book is that it is, you know, it does say a spiritual path to higher creativity, and that can be perceived in many different ways, but what I do like about the book is that she also suggests that you don't have to look at it from a religious standpoint or even a spiritual one, or even a spiritual one at all, all you have to do is just follow the exercises recommended and one of them is writing which is just a tool it's kind of like a meditation for your mind um, for you to just get out whatever clutter is standing in your way of creating of doing what it is you want to do that day now for someone like me who's super easily distracted my mind is just constantly going there's always stuff going on in my head and it's really hard for me to focus on things weirdly enough. Um, I'm either, either I can't focus or I'm so intensely focused that there's nothing else going on, but getting to that intense focus state is also pretty difficult for me. So writing and making lists of things definitely helps me stay on track so that I don't overwhelm myself and sort of to have like a bird's eye view of everything that I need to be doing. Um, <clears throat> Another thing is if you are in artistic burnout and you just don't have the energy to make art or music or whatever it is you're doing, sometimes just to give yourself that break and focus on other things is really helpful. Um, when you are doing this full time as a career, it's not that easy because your income relies on you being inspired and being creative and creating a lot of art. And so I can't afford to be an artistic burnout anymore. So even when I am artistic, artistically burnt out or blocked, I still push through that nowadays and I still have to force myself to paint and make something and put something out there because, you know, people sort of rely on me to do that. And yeah. But I've also developed a way to um, do it a little bit lighter, <laughs> not as intense as some of the other work I produce when I'm functioning at 100% capacity, 100% creative capacity. So I think finding um, sort of a comfort zone that you can fall back on if you are doing this full time, things that don't really require you to have some sort of really intense inspiration, things that you are comfortable with creating. Like for me, it's nature, like I'm doing in this video. I love painting flowers, I love painting forests, and I have this plethora of reference material at my disposal in my computer and my external hard drive. And so when I am an artistic burnout and I don't have these awesome creative ideas for 
complex portraits. I'm just going to go to what is safe for me and what I know is going to keep me going, keep me painting without falling off the wagon. Um, but it's not going to contribute to my burnout. You know what I mean? And another thing that really helps me out is to organize my stuff. Sometimes after a huge burst of creative energy where I've just produced a lot and I've done a lot of work and I find myself in a really messy environment because creativity can be so chaotic sometimes and you don't even realize the mess you're creating around yourself. And I'm one of those people that I can't function in a mess and so if things are disorganized as they slowly become because I'm not necessarily keeping 100% track of what I'm doing in my environment as I'm creating um, things can get a little crazy and a cluttered environment is not helpful to a cluttered mind so I try to stay as organized as I can and I notice that that definitely helps me avoid creative burnout or even deal with it if I happen to be in it. Um, at this current point in time, I also sleep in the art studio that I work in. The only bedroom-esque part of my room is, you know, the, the small bed that I sleep on. And the rest of my room is literally just nothing but workspace. I don't use it for anything but to sleep at night and then I work in it <laughs> throughout the day. So being able to separate... <laughs> the two, you know, the relaxation and the work is, is sometimes a challenge. So what I have to do every single day is like I have to make my bed every single day. If I don't make my bed that day, my entire day is going to be thrown off. And it's just a small, easy, simple task that you can get out of your way that morning and immediately, you know, you're starting off with some kind of a routine. So, I mean, that's just a personal thing that really helps me. But Dealing with artistic burnout is going to be different for everybody. I wanted to share with you guys some of the things that help me and sort of help me deal with that. And if you're wondering, am I artistically burnt out right now? Um, a little bit, yeah. I, I would say I am. I think I'm, I was a bit overworked. Um, <laughs> and then just like getting sick on top of that was not fun whatsoever. But I'm, I'm doing good. I'm coming right back and... Um, coming back with a vengeance. I mean, not really a vengeance. That sounds evil. I <laughs> I have positive intentions. Um, anyways, I just posted an over 20 minute video of behind the scenes of a new tropical portrait I've been working on, which I am going to have a time lapse up on YouTube and part two is going to go up on my Patreon very soon as well. If you guys are interested in nature references, like the ones that I use for my sketchbook Sundays or my artwork, I do share royalty free nature references that you guys can download off of my Patreon page. All of that is there. So I just wanted to make this Sketchbook Sunday to talk about something that is, I'm assuming, very relatable for all artists and creative people and just share with you guys where I'm at. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a beautiful day and I hope you have a beautiful week. I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.